Well, hello there. This is Mark Edelman, speech language pathologist, and welcome to the teaching of talking. Uh, this particular video is going to be entitled The Secret of Apraxia Speech Therapy. And, you know, I've lectured and written about apraxia, and there are a number of things about it that a lot of people don't realize. And so what I wanted to do today is just to give you a few very important concepts about apraxia because quite often people with severe to profound apraxia are told that uh, they chances are never going to speak again. And yet they're usually told that by people who are not familiar with the intricacies of apraxia speech therapy and believe that uh, it's probably impossible for the person with severe apraxia to speak again. Well, if you look back over time and you see people like Helen Keller, who was deaf and blind, you found a therapist or a teacher who would not let that get in the way. And uh, they knew Alexander Graham Bell, who invented the telephone. And Alexander Graham Bell had a mother who was deaf, and he was constantly looking for ways to help her speak. And so there was a collaboration with uh, Andy Sullivan and Alexander Graham Bell about finding the best solutions to help Helen Keller speak. But that's not what we're here to do today. I just wanted to bring that up to show you that usually it's the people who are said to be uh, impossible to speak again uh, that they quite often can speak again. But it all depends on the approach. And so what I want to do is just kind of outline the approach to you so that you'll have a better understanding of it. Now, usually with apraxia, there is often aphasia also. So it must be clearly delineated, the difference between apraxia and aphasia. And very simply put, an apraxia is where a person has difficulty moving their tongue and their lips to say words. Now, they might be able to say words, but they can't seem to get their tongue to move right, and the tongue doesn't seem to go to the right place uh, to formulate a word. Whereas in aphasia, aphasia is where a person can say a word, and can mimic a word. However, they have a hard time pulling the word up or stating in words what they wish to say. So that's the difference. One is a motor problem where the tongue and the teeth and the lips don't move accurately and therefore the sounds of speech cannot make words that have clarity. And the aphasia is where they know what they want to say, and they know the words, but there's a disconnect between the words they're thinking about and being able to say those words voluntarily. Okay, so you know that. So what's the secret? Well, I'm going to try to be as brief as I can here. The secret is you've got to teach the lips what to do. You've got to teach the tongue what to do. You've got to teach the teeth what to do. And you've got to <laughs> teach the throat what to do. Now, if you're thinking about that, you go, gee, that seems like it's awfully confusing. You've got to teach the lips what to do. You've got to teach the teeth what to do. You've got to teach the tongue what to do. You've got to teach the throat what to do. And that's what you have to do. So, what do we do? Well, 
You can't start out stimulating words with a severe apraxia because if you did, they wouldn't come out right. And that's why therapists and professionals who are not familiar with the intricacies, that's why they say, well, this person's not going to talk again. And, you know, it, that makes sense. But to the people who have studied and practiced apraxia speech therapy, they know that there are certain sounds produced with the lips, and those are the P, B, M, and W. And there are certain vowels that are all produced with the mouth, with various movements of the lips. And the vowels are the easiest sounds of speech to teach. And so one of the things we do with apraxia is we start out teaching the vowels, just the vowels. But even before the vowels, we see if they can move the lips into the correct positions for the vowels. Now, the other thing you want to know is that there are specific movements in the mouth to make speech sounds. And each vowel is produced with a different gesture. So if we were going to talk about ah, you'd see that the mouth was wide open. If we were to think about e, you'll see that there's almost a smile there and the lips are attracted back towards the cheeks and you could go I and so the mouth is open and it closes with that particular sound or ow where there are two movements because that's called a diphthong so each vowel has a separate movement and that's what we teach first and you know something just about everyone that I've worked with, with rare exception, can be stimulated to produce vowel sounds because they're very easy. And that's our approach to apraxia therapy, that we start with the sounds that are easy, the lip sounds. Then we go to the sounds that are produced with the lips and the teeth because all of these sounds are made in the front of the mouth and are most easily visible. So if you want to teach an F or a V, then you've got to first get them to bite on the lower lip because that's the position for the F. That's also the position for the V. And then if you wanted to teach a person how to make a TH sound, as in thank you, or them, or those, or that, you would teach the person to stick out their tongue and put it between their teeth. And that's how it goes. There's a progression. There's an order of apraxia therapy. And it usually is going from the speech sounds that are most visible, which is the vowels, then the PBM and W, then the lip and the teeth sounds, like the F and the TH, and then the sounds that are produced with the tongue in between the teeth, the TH for them and those. And then... They're the sounds that are produced with the tongue up on the roof of the mouth. And those are the T, D, N, S, L, S, H, C, H. And therefore, we can teach a person with severe apraxia how to speak again by approaching it very, very simply. And it's fun because it's simple and it's easy and it's not complex, 
We don't start with words with many who have severe to profound apraxia. We start with the positions of the mouth and make sure we make sure that they can move th those particular structures for the sounds that we want. And when we teach a caregiver how to do that, uh, gosh, it's amazing and thrilling, I might add, at the results we get because they can practice that all day long at home, not just once or twice a week when a person shows up for therapy. So that's a little bit about apraxia. The secret to apraxia is teaching the structures of speech, the lips, the teeth, the tongue, and the throat. We teach them the exact position that they need to be in in order to produce the sounds that make up the words that we want to teach. So it's a fun process and it's relatively simple if you know what to do. <laughs> and you know, that's, that's really one of the things that uh, is quite remarkable about experts who know how to do things. Quite often, to the typical layman, uh, they think that everything's so complex that they'd never be able to fix it or deal with it by themselves. But we can teach you and teach others. We teach lots of therapists. We teach lots of caregivers the principles and the methods to improve talking, especially for apraxia. And so if you'd like to learn more about it, kindly subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and give us a thumbs up if you would. And then at the conclusion of the video, just uh, click on the title of the video and it will open and show you a bunch of links that if you want to contact me uh, for a, a free get acquainted visit, or if you have anything you want to ask me or communicate with me, uh, my information will be uh, there uh, if you press on the title of the YouTube video and below it will be my contact information and information about the products that we have that will enable you to help your loved one with apraxia. The final thing I wanted to say is there is a process called mentoring. And you know, famous golfers have mentors. They work with a pro every now and then to sharpen their game. And there are lots of people who want to be able to master certain subjects. And they have found that by working with an expert, they can learn what they need to know faster than any book or video or anything else because the expert can look at the situation, size it up, and then develop a plan that can be followed. So consider that if the coming months you would like to help your loved one with apraxia speak better. This is Mark Edelman, speech-language pathologist, wishing you a good day today, a good week, a good month, a good year, and of course, a wonderful lifetime. Bye-bye now.